Welcome to Citizens Report. I'm your host, Patty Seppa, Vice President of the Radnor Citizens Police Organization. Today, I am pleased to welcome two guests on set today, Delaware County's District Attorney, Jack Stolzheimer, whom also is the chairperson of the Delaware County Justice Reform Task Force. Also joining us is Radnor Township's Police Superintendent, Chris Flanagan, who is appointed to serve on that task force. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patty. Thank you, Patty. I would like to start with a uh, very short video of clips of what the, ra the residents of Radnor Township were saying at a recent town hall meeting. This meeting was led by Superintendent Flanagan to allow them to voice their concerns. I should note that this was held by the Civic Association of Radnor Township. Let's take a look at that video. Thank God for this opportunity for everyone to come together. Um, right now, there's been a lot of things going on in, in our country, and not, not only in the country, but throughout the world. And uh, Chief Flanagan had to... <sighs> had the heart to sit back here and open up his heart, his um, police force, and everything else that has to do with Radnor Police in this township to the RTCA building. So did the Radnor Police get any implicit bias training? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we had the Anti-Defamation League, which is one of the single source largest law enforcement training agencies in the country that trained us in anti-bias. There's two parts to that. The police officers had some very specialized training and the ADL realizes the challenges because we're going into people's homes and doing, you know, sometimes there's a domestic and there's a lot of tensions and different things. So all of the officers have gone, every officer has gone through that and we team up now. Um, Law Marine Police and Haverford Police also use the same training program so that if we only have one person, I mean, it, it, it's like five or $6,000 off the top of my head to bring them out. So we'll throw a person in there and vice versa, they'll jump in with two people. So we give that. And then the, the ADL also has a program, I'm going to call kind of for municipal workers and general workforce and all of our township staff, every employee went through that. Everybody who worked from us from trash to the codes department. And I'm very proud of that effect. Second thing is we had major Ben Brooks. He came in um, and he did a program for us. Um, not every officer has gone through that because he's kind of gotten bigger, uh, more popular, and it's harder to get him. But he had a program that had to do with de-escalation and anti-bias, so it was a little bit of combined. But right now, the ADL is sort of our standard, and I think it's one of the highest standards in the country and, in fact, uh, um, overseas as well. It's not just tonight. If we start something, it's got to keep going, okay? This isn't something where, okay, we did it, and that's it. And yeah. If we can't sit down and say, let's have a follow up on this in three months or six months, then I'm sorry, you got a lot of kids out there. There they go again. Yak, yak, yak. And that, that's the issue here. I, I realize there's not a, ch a lot of children here, but I, I often say I, I Uber drive now. The stuff I hear in cars is remarkable, how parents talk. And it's essentially that a lot of kids are just saying this. I met a young kid today. He's, he's from Nigeria. He's only been here five years. And he's just like, people don't listen, people don't care. They tell us what we think. And I know that's not your job, but as parents, we all have to look at this. And again, whether you're a police officer or a member of the community, we've got to start realizing not only does it begin at home because we say it begins at home, but we've got to start doing it. And I think the success is, is years ago, I, I think Joe might be the only one that remembers Officer Brogan, but he was a crossing guard down at the middle school. And he just almost addressed everybody by name because you saw him every day. But also he would ask, hey, how are you doing today? What's your name? Whatever. And I, I think that's the thing. We, we've gotten to a point where, yes, we do this. And we have four or 500 friends. But how many of us do this? Something like this venue here would be a good opportunity to have with our youth in the community where they can give you feedback on what they would like to see. So, you know. Somebody, I mean, I'd be willing to start something up like that. I know my children are grown now, and um, but I have more time on my hands now than I did when they were younger because I worked a lot. But um, I think that would be a good opportunity is we look around here and we're all, you know, of age and we're looking for the youth and our young adults to be here to get to know you all. There's a major issue going on in this country with race relations. And right now, this being a predominantly black neighborhood, there's no doubt that the effect of what's going on in the country has a direct effect with us. Exactly. Now, I grew up here too. 
I'm scared to drive around. I'll be honest with you, I'm 64 years old. I'm scared to drive around because I don't trust the police. So I had a conversation with a lot of youth around here about coming to this meeting and they all said they didn't want to come. They wanted to see, you know, some type of response. And the reality of it is nothing happens overnight. We know that. But I think it's imperative that number one, the Radnor Township Police really needs to look at a community advisory board. And just like someone said, if you're not from around here, I know there's people on some of these boards that don't have a clue about Highland Avenue. They did. So you have to get somebody on here that's from the community that can really speak directly to the community yeah. about what's going on in the community and not someone that lives outside the community to dictate to you what may or may not be true. And, and that, that is very, very important. These young people are afraid of you. And there's no reason. I grew up, I knew the cops. Every complaint that comes into the police department, whether it is an email, an anonymous call, uh, somebody in person, whatever, will be investigated. Uh, I can assure you of that. And in this day and age, with all the cameras that we have as well, with the body cameras and the in-car cameras, it really helps the whole process along. Um, but what we certainly have uh, decided to do recently was we instituted a complaint form itself. We're hoping this streamlines some of the complaints that people may have. It has a lot of information on here for you to see. There's a lot of information for you to fill out that we can get them from you. Uh, some of the issues that I can have sometimes when we get the anonymous calls or somebody just sends an email is there's not a lot of information. And I've reached out to a lot of people who have sent them back to the emails they've come from and never have had any follow-up from certain things. So we'll still look into it, but it really helps validate the whole process if somebody can sit down and talk to me and tell me in person so we can have a conversation about what's going on. Uh, I've been on this department for 41 years. I've grown up in Radnor. I'm proud of the department. I think that we can always do better. I'm not going to say we were at the, the pinnacle. Nobody ever is. So I think that we always have room for improvement. If there's something we can get from the community to tell us there may be certain officers, the way that they're acting or talking to people or whatever uh, that offends people, let us know. Uh, we need to know that as well because we need to make these officers better also. And I can say from being an older member, I'm also 64 and killing my knees standing here right now. But, Me too. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the younger cops that are around here anymore, they're great people, but there's a whole different culture with them as well. There are more of the on the phone texting people rather than getting out of the cars and talking to people in the community. So it would be really nice if, they, if we could get them out there and doing that. And some of them have started doing it, especially since they're on the bicycles, motorcycles, and everything like that. So I'm incredibly fortunate to know a lot of the residents, not just on this block, but throughout you know all 14 uh, miles of Radnor Township. And I'll stop no matter where I am, if I'm on Ramblewood and Bryn Mawr or here on Highland Avenue. I know that that's, uh, that's the case for a lot of our officers. Um, and we're, we're incredibly lucky that they'll stop us when we do those school visits and we can continue a conversation that perhaps started here tonight or you know, started a couple months ago when we were here for another event or throughout the town. Um, a lot of our officers know the athletics that the students play and might ask about that or their successes that they're going on to into college. Um, so we're definitely lucky you know, to have that personal interaction of being a, you know, essentially a small town police department. There's been a massive reduction in police recruiting uh, across the country for many reasons. People just don't wanna do the job but still it should be statistical to the amount that you have. Do you see what I'm saying? So we do our best and we're willing, you know, we're willing to take any new idea that's reasonable and put it into play uh, to get that. But you're welcome to meet with our team. If you have a different idea, um, we tell the commissioners what we're doing. We, we like I said, we're advertising a major newspaper because you, you have to live in Pennsylvania uh, to be a police officer in the Commonwealth. So we do everything that we possibly can to get the word out. In an attempt to make sure the community is heard, Delaware County, fueled by District Attorney Stolzheimer, has formed a Delaware County Justice Reform Task Force. Both of you, um, whoever wants to start, let's, let's talk about that task force. Sure. Um, what's the mission for the task force? What are some of the goals? Sure. And so, Patty, let me just start uh, by saying, first of all, thank you very much for having this conversation. And thank you, Superintendent Flanagan, for being part of the task force and also being part of this conversation and for the great work you're doing in Radnor Township as the chief of police. Um, the idea behind the task force really was, you know, since the election of a new county council, new district attorney, we wanted to take a fresh look at the way we were doing criminal justice here in Delaware County anyway. 
Uh, as everyone knows, this uh, spring and summer, um, social justice has become on the front page burner issue here in across the United States, particularly after the uh, tragic death of George Floyd in Minnesota. Um, so that seems like a perfect time and perfect opportunity for those of us in law enforcement, those of us in the community uh, to get together and start talking about how we can bridge the gap uh, between some people in the community who think law enforcement uh, is not serving their community's needs uh, and those of us who believe that we can, even though we think we're doing a great job in law enforcement in Delaware County, want to match those the moment uh, and make sure that we are meeting those folks and talking to them about how we can do maybe our jobs even better. Um, and this is part of a national conversation that's been going on in this country really for a couple of decades. Uh, when I was a federal prosecutor under George Bush, uh, U.S. Department of Justice began something called the Justice Reinvestment Initiative. This is back in 2006. At that point, the U.S. Department of Justice had come to the realization that our criminal justice system was sort of off track. Uh, we were arresting and incarcerating way too many people. Um, and in fact, we weren't then able to make sure we were dealing with some of the other important uh, problems in our society, such as the mental health crisis that I think has enveloped a lot of what we do in criminal justice. Um, so they began trying to encourage states and local governments to do kind of what we're doing, which is to take a fresh look at the way you're doing criminal justice in your community uh, and to see if there's a way we can lessen the reliance on incarceration and provide other services, uh, in including things like community policing, uh, to make sure that we are building bridges between members of the community. And that way, I think really making sure we're keeping everyone safe. Um, so sort of a long answer to your question, Patty, but what we're really doing is we're bringing together a diverse group of people from the community. Um, the task force has a number of different working groups. The one Chris and I serve on is called 21st Century Policing, which really we took that name from President Obama's national uh, task force that looked at the ways we should be doing policing in the 21st century and taking those principles and seeing how they're applied here in Delaware County. Uh, and Chief Flanagan is one of the people in that working group because, in fact, he's been doing that here in Radnor Township since under, under his tenure. He has tremendously upgraded the amount of training his officers have received, and he every day gets up thinking about how his police force can better engage the community here in Radnor Township. So I'll, I'll let him turn it over to, to him to talk about that. Uh, in particular, but what we've been doing in our working group thus far is talking about that. First, having frank conversations from people from the NAACP, people from the Black Caucus of Delaware County, sitting down together with police chiefs like Chris uh, and line officers like some of my detectives in CID and some of his officers, and talking about how we're do we need to do this better in the 21st century. Um, so, with that, I hope I've answered your question, but I would love for Chris to be able to talk to his perspective on what both what he's doing here in Radnor Township and what we're trying to do in the task force. Thank you. Uh, first of all, again, as Jack stated, it's a great honor to be here and uh, to share what's going on in Delaware County and in Radnor Township, because I think it's, it's so important to what the DA stated, how people want to see changes in law enforcement, changes in other governmental uh, related issues on how they deal with their respective community, whatever that level of diversity is that they have uh, in their region. However, dialing into Delaware County and Radnor Township is this 21st Century uh, Task Force report uh, created under President Obama and his team. We basically picked up a phenomenal document that had six pillars um, and I'll just quickly state them because if the audience doesn't know, all you have to do is type in um, 21st Century Police Report, just on any of your browsers, and it'll come up, and you can read it in its entirety. This is a public document. It's, it's not mm -hmm. something that only DAs or police departments or government officials can get a hold of. So you can really read and become a positive part of change, either in your neighborhood, block, state, or obviously federal government. The six pillars are, Patty, uh, number one, building trust and legitimacy. Two, police I'm sorry, policy and oversight. Number three, technology and social media. Number four, community policing and crime reduction. Five, training and education. And number six, officer <laughs> wellness and safety. And those six pillars are what we're working on. So when that task force created it, it was looking to give this direction 
um, and let you apply it locally. So you give it to a DA who knows that they have particular problems or challenges in Delaware County, and then we want to overcome them with the six pillar approach, which I think is really a smart way to do it because it didn't get too specific. It allows local government, local towns like Radnor to be able to apply these principles in a way they best see fit for the challenges they have. What I'm excited about is there's a lot of talk. Um, there's a lot of feelings that are important. Perceptions are sometimes just as real as reality, and also some perceptions get formed a little bit differently after they hear a different uh, viewpoint, whether it be law enforcement, a district attorney, uh, local municipalities, state uh, legislators. With that, the community can hear what we're working on, and we can start to make changes and improve ourselves. And out of these horrible tragedies that have happened, and we know what, what's changed or put this, these issues at the forefront, we have the best opportunity to take action. And that's why I'm excited. It's a big honor to have Jack call and say, would you be on this committee? And I got support from the Radnor Township Commissioners and Township Manager White to, to jump on it along with uh, Commissioner Mulroney and our police chaplain, Reverend Howard. Um, so we have three representatives of Radnor Township on the DA, or I should say County Council's committee, uh, led by the district attorney. So we're excited to be here. So I hope that set the framework of where we're at. And it, it's more than talk, it's action. I think Jack would agree. We have talked about the issues. Now we're going to try and apply action to what we can take on uh, in this time frame. Okay, District Attorney uh, Stolzheimer, how, what was the process in picking um, and electing the members for the task force? It seems like there's very different backgrounds on the task force, which is a positive thing. But can you tell me about the process on the selection of the members? Sure, uh, you're exactly right. What we were trying to do was get a diversity of opinions. Uh, you know, in the working group, Chris and I are, are, are involved with, with 21st century policing. We needed to have a group of police chiefs. We are very lucky to have outstanding leadership in our police chiefs association here in Delaware County. So we actually have a chiefs association. Um, they picked representative members. They're the ones, uh, at, at my suggestion, but they're the ones who actually selected uh, Chief Flanagan uh, to sit on, on, on the commission. Uh, they've also, we've reached out to the uh, Fraternal Order of Police. We have two Fraternal Order of Police lodges. These are the unions that represent the rank and file police officers. They have representatives on this uh, working group. Uh, and we reached out to our friends in the community, um, the Black Caucus of Delaware County, the NAACP, uh, and some prominent citizens who are involved in things like the president of the Delaware County Community College, for example. Um, all of these folks uh, were willing to, 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 to spend some time. This is all personal time that they're taking to this task uh, to meet and to have these conversations. Um, and one thing I would say is Delaware County is a very diverse community, um, not just diverse racially or by religious background, but just in the different levels of communities we have. Um, we have a city in Delaware County, the city of Chester, which is one of the most economically depressed and most violent cities in America. It's a small city, but it has tremendous problems. Then we have townships like where you live in Radnor and where I live in Haverford that are blessed to have a lot more uh, wealth and a lot more uh, positive things uh, that we can sort of put our hats on. So I, I think one of the things we wanted to make sure is that we had representation from all the different communities in Delaware County, not just the different racial representatives, but also the different kinds of communities, because we do need to bridge the gap. I mean, we need to make sure that we have uh, people from the city of Chester talking to people from Radnor Township, uh, because, I, and I think Chris will agree with this, being a police officer, there are things that every one of them has to be able to do and has to be trained to do, uh, but the challenges from your job are in part based upon the community you serve. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we were talking about every community in Delaware County, uh, no matter what the circumstances are in this great diverse county we live in. So if you wanna expand on that, either of you, um, what are some of the things that you are doing to have the residents be heard? And do you feel that the residents feel that they are being heard? Well, I, 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 I will speak first and then let Chris speak, but I, I do think one of the things we've learned from the task force thus far is that Delaware County law enforcement is doing a great job already. We may not be tooting our horns enough, um, but our chiefs are doing a great job making sure their departments 
are serving the diverse communities that they live in. Um, and, you know, maybe we need to formalize that a little bit more. Maybe we do need to make sure that uh, everybody knows in the community what we're doing, uh, being a little more transparent about our operations. Uh, but community policing is a big deal here in Delaware County. I think most of our chiefs have embraced it, Chris, more than just about anybody else. Um, but the idea that our police officers get to develop relationships with the communities they serve is what this is all about. Um, and I think that that has been, to me, the most enlightening thing about the work of our task force thus far, is when we get people in a room together, they want to build bridges. They don't want to put up walls. Um, and so what we're doing is we're finding ways to talk about things like better training, uh, including uh, you know racial bias and un, uh, training that we need to do for law enforcement and for quite honestly for our county government across the board. Uh, we need to do those kind of trainings to, to keep up with our friends in law enforcement. I think in many cases, but second, just to make sure that we're, we're we have a system in place to make sure that the community knows how to get engaged with their police on a positive uh, engagement yes. level. Chris, would you agree? No, no I, I think it, it's very accurate in his description of, of how we're getting it done and how we're communicating. I would like to state, too, uh, the, the wide range of people on the 21st century diet. Um, one of the important notes I'd like to make is we have some, at least a couple professors from academia in Delaware County. And I think that's critical for two reasons. One is they get to hear um, I'm not going to call them, well, they're young to me, but they're touching on the college students, which we've learned are so powerful politically and, mm -hmm. and how they vote and what they think. So we have representation from there, which I think was uh, you know, smart of Jack and County Council to get them on. And then it just builds that bridge for the future. And they're in different colleges throughout Delaware County. It's not just one, one section. It's not just one college or university. It's represented across our borders of, of Delaware County. Okay, so can you also let us know a couple things that the task force has already, <clears throat> excuse me, been activated to do? I mean, recently you went to that town hall meeting, which was a great conversation with the residents. Is that, what else, what other things ha have you been doing successfully, do you feel? <clears throat> so, so, well, I think that the, the town hall meeting is critical, um, just because, and I'll be brief on it, is that you have to hear what's going on locally in your respective community. Um, in the same breath, the task force has to gauge those different, my perceptions and the challenges that Radner has. I need to share that with the committee. And then I need to hear what's going on five, five townships away, five boroughs away, so that when we put our six pillar approach, and I like it, none of them are prioritized over another, um, that you take the six pillars and you start applying them across the board. One of the things, Patty, I'll say, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Mr. District Attorney, is that training, we know that there's something that we can do to have a baseline training for officers throughout Delaware County. So as he stated, the anti-bias training, the de-escalation training and other things, but it's not just for police officers. We're sharing this with County Council and our commissioners that we want to have it for across the board because they make policy. This isn't just about the police. This is about a whole set of things, but it definitely focuses on some police related issues. So I'm not skirting that, but this is what's exciting about all of us sitting sort of at the same table working together. I totally agree with what Chris just said. Uh, it is more than just police. And one of the working groups is talking about the, the courts and the criminal justice system here, how we can have more diversionary programs that are effective. Um, so there are less people in our county jail uh, and more people who are actually getting help. Um, U.S. Department of Justice has estimated about 60 to 65 percent of people in local county jails have a diagnosable mental illness. Um, if that's not being addressed, we're just cycling people through the system. That's not good for you as taxpayers. It's certainly not good for us as prosecutors and police officers. Um, we have a working group led by Elaine Schaefer, um, who's a county councilwoman who was a Radner, the president of the Radnor Board of Commissioners. Um, she and Monica Taylor are leading one on how we can make our county government more diverse. As Chris said, we have to have the same kind of training, not just for our police officers, but across the board. Everybody has to be trained in, 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 in uh, anti-bias uh, training. Uh, we also have to, let's be honest, we have to hire people who look more like people who live in Delaware County. That hasn't been true in Delaware County at the county government level for a long time. Um, so they're taking active steps right now to make sure that that's in place. They just hired a new human resources director. We're taking sort of elementary steps at the county level, like letting the community know when we have openings. 
um, and looking to hire a broad range of people. Um, but it's exciting because, as Chris said, it's not just talk focusing on policing, but what we're focusing on is the whole criminal justice system and the whole way we do county government here uh, with, with an eye towards understanding the diversity of our community uh, and serving their needs, which I, I want to brag on Chris, if I could, just for a little bit, because that's really what he's all about, is making sure as Radner, as chief of police, that they take a community or customer service approach to their law enforcement. Um, I've, I've seen it firsthand. Um, they are one of the best community engaged uh, departments in Delaware County. It's not to say that there aren't others who are doing as good a job or, or close to as good a job as Chris does, um, but he and he gets up every day with that mentality. Uh, and that's what we need in our leadership. We've got a lot of it in Delaware County. And again, we need to let people know that, um, but we got to make sure everybody's doing the same level of community engagement that, that Chris is doing. Those are excellent points. And yes, Radnor Township Police Department are very visible and they're very community oriented. So that's a great thing. Um, so as far as the task force, do you foresee this task force evolving, changing, and continuing long-term into the future? Or is this just a short-term? Both. Uh, I, I think there are some immediate things we need to do. Uh, we, we need to ask our legislators, for example, for some um, resources from the state. So we're going to be doing that, I think, relatively shortly. Uh, I know Elaine, uh, in, in her working group, there are some more long-term issues they want to they want to tackle in terms of making sure uh, employers and employment and workforce development is done in Delaware County in a different way than it's ever been done before, which is really exciting. Um, so I, I think we we're going to try to do again both. We're going we're going to make some short-term changes get some initial reports out there. But I also think as long as people want to continue to have this conversation, uh, we're going to have it. Um, one of the things about having a new generation of people running county government uh, is we're not wedded to the old ways. And one of the things we want to do is engage the community even more. Just like Chris had town halls, we want to make sure that we're reaching out to people in as many different ways as possible. Task force is just one way to do that. Exactly. Okay. Would, I'd like to... Um, we're running out of time, so I'd like to give you both an opportunity. Is there something else or anything else that you want to add that I may not have covered? <clears throat> Chris, I, if you don't mind, I just would like to say one thing about to the people of Radnor Township about the, the, the leadership of uh, Superintendent Flanagan. We're very lucky. You are very lucky in Radnor Township to have him there. And he's an example of what we have a lot of in Delaware County, but we need more all across the country. Really smart, intelligent. Uh, progressive leadership at the top level. And that's hard to do. And I think one of the things we have to make sure in this moment is that we're not scaring people away from this profession because it is most difficult. This is the most difficult time in my lifetime to be a, a police officer. Um, they are being attacked. Uh, some are being shot at. Uh, and they are being held accountable for uh, actions that are not under their control. But people in Radnor should know that Chief Lanigan not only walks the walk, but he talks the talk. Um, he, when we had an incident in, in uh, the spring in Upper Darby where we had looting, he was on the front lines making sure the peace was, was restored to Upper Darby. Um, we just had a rally for Black Lives Matter in Ridley and we needed to protect uh, the, the marchers. Chris Flanagan was in uniform on his motorcycle standing between counter protesters and protesters. That's the kind of leadership I think we have in Delaware County, not just Chris, but there's other leaders like him. But I would like to get this message out to people. We need more and better police officers in this country and we need more Chris Flanagan's. And we as a community need to recognize that. So, uh, you don't mind I bragged on you, Chris. Well, uh, I, I'm very thankful that you were able to say it. Yeah. We, we, have a, we have a great police force. And, and anybody who's watching this, and I hope people outside the borders, Delaware County is a rich county meaning it has so much to offer. It has so much passion. Um, and, and that passion comes through. And passion can be a good thing in great times, and it can be a bad thing in bad times. The, I can tell you truthfully that being on this committee is a great honor. You have my, my pledge to the citizens of Radnor, our board of commissioners, um, and those outside in all of Delaware County, that we on the committee under the leadership of uh, Jack and the county council are doing our best to make continue to make this an even better county. So I'll end with that. There's great police departments. Get involved. 
read the 21st Century Police Report, get involved, meet your police department, have conversations. There's some great people out there doing a great job. Call the DA, call DA Stoltzheimer. He's going to talk to you. He's got a hell of a team that can, is doing a great job reforming justice uh, process here in Delaware County. I'm excited to be a part of it. And I, and I like being challenged and we're challenged and we're going to do a good job. And I'll leave it at that. Just call us. Okay. District Attorney Stolzheimer, Chief Lanigan, I want to thank you so much for coming out and talking about this very important issue. Thank you, Pat. Um, and <clears throat> I'd like to thank the Delaware County residents for joining us. And as uh, Chief Lanigan said, if you're interested in being part of specifically Radnor Township, you can uh, send an email to contact at radnorcitizenspolice.org and you can join the Radnor Citizens Police Organization as well. Thank you so much and have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. You too.